hi guys hi guys now look if you get through all of that and you're happy with your mask and it's worked well and you've got time on your hands you want to develop it a little bit further then i think we could maybe try a painting and i've actually been looking again i've been doing loads of research at aboriginal art so as you can see here there's some of the images that i've managed to print out and this one here is a gecko look at that beautiful animal and you've got the kangaroo bouncing around but look at the patterns and the circles and the spirals are a big thing about aboriginal art and uh he's, he's obviously a fish with some designs going on and then we've got the snake here um oh that is full of color full of pattern and i think that is a, is it a turtle i think that's a sea turtle possibly with with possibly images of shells and reflections and but it's all about pattern and color with a strong dark outline very contrasting also because it's art and i've got to look intelligent um you've got a chance to look at some other animal artists here i've got george stubbs if you're into your horses check george stubbs out franz mark one of my favorite um beautiful cows sheep cattle monkeys all sorts lancia you remember the stag oh yes monica the glen and all of that and then you've got this slightly crazy guy, Damien Hurst, who puts animals in formaldehyde once they've passed away and makes an awful lot of money out of it. But very interesting, very interesting uh, artist stroke sculptor. And then you've got traditional, I think his name's David Shepherd. I might have got that wrong. Double tell me if I have. And he does wild animals. And he, I remember his picture of a charging elephant. Very frightening, but very realistic. OK, these are a little bit. Franz Mark is a little bit more abstract. Damien Hurst is a bit more 3D. So check these guys out because they're all different styles and techniques. Now, getting back to my picture here. Now, what I've done is I've looked at my orangutan, okay, and I've just simplified it in terms of shapes when I've drawn it out and I've, I've put it up in. As you can see, I've already started it. I got a bit carried away. I, I was just going to draw it and then I was going to do time lapse painting and everything. But I, I, I discovered these things called cotton buds that you're not allowed to put in your ears because they might get stuck in. But you know what? They're great for putting paint on the surface. And, and I've not just got them. I've got some straws and I've even got my, my skewers. I've cut some of those so I can get some smaller ones of those. And, and all you do is, you literally, I've just got two colours out here. You could put some more out. And all you're going to do, let's just go, let's just go with, what should we go with? Let's just go with the blue. Okay, I'm just going to go straight in there and I'm going to dab it to try and get a nice sort of consistency. Now, I've not added any water to this, so let's just give this a go. Here we go. Let's just see if we can apply it. See if we can get, effectively, it's a kind of print. So... Here we go. Should we go straight on to here? Let's just, just, oh, here we go. Look at that. Oh, look at that. How lovely is that? That is high quality printing, that is. Oh, I do like these cotton buds. Oh, I think I'm going to have to do a project with these at a later date with you guys. So you never know. Later on, you might just work on them. But where you place them is pretty cool. And if you press hard, they should be slightly bigger. And you press softer, they'll be slightly smaller but very effective then so we go from the cotton board let's just try the straw so the straw in he goes dab him dab him in like that wiggle him around a bit just get enough on the end let's have a go with that never quite sure what we're going to get but this is it you've got to experiment you see so let's just try these in between so i'm actually ah oh, now this is quite what i would call embossed because the ink is actually coming up to the surface now I'm just going to get some more, did I say ink? It's actually acrylic paint, guys. So if you can get yourself some acrylic paint, you're going to love that because that is embossed. Embossed means it's coming up off the surface. When it dries, you could close your eyes and run your fingers over that. You'd actually feel it. But you see it, it's starting to stick up. Look at that. Oh, yeah. It's cracking stuff, this, this, this acrylic paint. Beautiful. So, as you can see, I'm starting to build it up. Now, once you've filled it with all your colours, and I would say, 
look at complementary colours, like the complementary colour of red is green. Now, I should have really put green on there, but I put blue because I like to break the rules and I didn't get any green out anyway. But as you can see, I started to put green on there. So experiment. So purple and yellow work well together. Blue and orange work well together. Um, what else? Red and green. I said red and green, blue and orange, uh, purple and yellow. And my mind's gone a bit blank now. So once you've once you've filled it with your images, and I, if you noticed here, I've actually brought brought the sea turtle into the picture, and I've put you know, I've just drawn him in. I'm combining two images. Again, you can research your own image and incorporate that into the design. Now, with regard to Aboriginal art, it is it goes back sixty to eighty thousand years. It's it's like cave painting. They have cave paintings. On their walls mostly um, of animals um, but also a lot of it is to do with their dreams which are actually supposedly passed on from their family and they can only paint a dream that has been passed on so it's it's a process of storytelling and it's just the use of color if you research Aboriginal art you will see some beautiful colors being used so once you've done all that guys once you've experimented with all your color i would strongly advise you invest in a nice big thick permanent marker because then you can start to go around the pencil lines you see that there and and i'm actually tidying up my design okay and thicken up the lines and once this is solid once this is all solid and you start to go around it with your permanent marker it will take shape now if you're super keen and you've got super time on your hands and you've got access to Amazon you could order some fabric paints and all you've got to do is get a bit of fabric do your design straight onto the fabric and who knows stitch it up and turn it into a wee cushion for your pet dog or your pet hamster just a thought oh that's very clever stuff so we're going from mask making to painting to textiles